Hello and welcome to Drugs Plus. Whether you're here for exam revision or just general interest, I hope you find this video useful. If you do, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to support this channel so that I'm able to continue creating this content. In this video, I'm going to discuss the structure and function of G-protein coupled receptors. These receptors consist of an extracellular N-terminus, seven transmembrane domains, and an intracellular C-terminus. However, their most distinguishing feature is their G-proteins, or guanine nucleotide binding proteins, which consist of alpha, beta, and gamma subunits. When a ligand binds to and activates a G-protein coupled receptor, or GPCR, the alpha subunit exchanges its GDP molecule for a GTP molecule. This provides it with the energy it needs to dissociate and mediate a series of intracellular signaling cascades. GPCRs are subdivided into class A, B and C. Class A receptors have a ligand binding pocket and include rhodopsin and protease activated receptors. Class B receptors have their ligand binding site on the extracellular N terminus and include the glucagon receptor. And class C receptors have a venous flytrap structure where ligands bind and include metabotropic glutamate receptors. GPCRs can also be subdivided by the form of G protein to which they are attached. GS coupled receptors activate adenyl cyclase. This enzyme converts ATP to cyclic AMP. This cyclic AMP activates protein kinase A, which goes on to activate a variety of intracellular signaling cascades. GI-coupled receptors do the exact opposite. They inhibit adenylyl cyclase. This means that the cyclic AMP concentration will decrease and so will protein kinase A activity. GQ coupled receptors activate phospholipase C. This enzyme converts PIP2 to IP3 in diacylglycerol. This IP3 causes calcium to enter the cytoplasm from the endoplasmic reticulum. This calcium along with the diacylglycerol, activates protein kinase C, which goes on to activate a variety of intracellular signaling cascades. However, the beta and gamma subunits often also have functions. For example, they can block voltage-gated calcium channels and open potassium channels, leading to hyperpolarization, they can also activate adenyl cyclase, phospholipase C and PI3 kinase. Perhaps their most important feature, however, may be their participation in receptor desensitization. The beta-gamma subunit recruits GRK. GRK phosphorylates the third intracellular loop on the GPCR, where the G protein usually binds. This allows arresting molecules to bind here instead, blocking the G protein from doing so. This prevents the receptor from being activated and is a vital step in GPCR activation. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it useful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to support this channel so that I'm able to keep creating this content. I'll be back with more pharmacology videos soon.